Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure review today. We're going to look at the McFarlane DC Multiverse Dark Knight Trilogy, Batman and Joker. This is the Christian Bale Batman and the Heath Ledger Joker. But not only that, this is the gold label Target exclusive Joker Eyes versions. When you hear Joker Eyes, Batman is sort of defaced. It's like he's been graffitied, quote unquote, Jokerized. One could even say maybe he's infected. I don't know. It's a thing McFarlane's been doing. Very gimmicky. Then we have Joker. How do you have a Jokerized Joker? Well, it's not what you'd expect. I was kind of thinking Joker with his makeup and all that stuff, a little bit extreme. But it's really just sort of a repainted Joker for the Dark Knight trilogy in a darker black suit. Actually, it looks pretty cool. And if you get all four of these guys, and we haven't officially seen Two-Face or Scarecrow, but we know there's going to be a Jokerized version of them coming, because there simply has to be, as we're collecting to build Bane, and we'll see on the back of the package, etc. I find it very annoying they didn't release them all at once. I mean, honestly, the fact that these exist in itself is annoying, but why would you make me wait a long time to build such a ridiculous Bane figure? That is super annoying. I wish I could do Two-Face and Scarecrow and these figures all at the same time, but unfortunately, I can't. It is what it is. We'll be doing these guys in pairs. In the meantime, let's take a look at the packaging. As you can see the top, 22 boom parts, McFarland Toys, ages 12 plus, gold label collection. Gold label simply means it's exclusive. These figures are exclusive to Target. DC Multiverse Batman Artist Series. Collect to build Bane. This is the first of four figures you need to build Bane for the Dark Knight Rises, but this will be a Jokerized version. See Bane's legs, purple. Batman comes with a bunch of yellow accessories. They should be pretty good for background, actually. And then he has sort of this weird Heath Ledger paint on his face. It just, I don't know. I think it looks kind of bad. One side, Batman, and this one from the Dark Knight Rises crossed out. Other side, Batman, Artist Series. The bottom, a bunch of credits. There's his barcode. And on the back, as you can see, it's going to be collect and build a Jokerized Bane. Here are the checklist of what parts you have, instructions put together. And then you can see the other figures. Of course, we are obviously going to be getting a Jokerized Two-Face and Scarecrow. I'm really curious to see what they're going to look like. Then we have Joker here. More Bane pieces. Another stack of money. That is awesome. The second figure to build Bane. Joker. Ah, from The Dark Knight Rises. Dumb. Joker was not in that movie. Other side, Joker Artist Series. Here is Joker's barcode. And in the back, exact same thing. Checklist of all the figures. So no further ado, let's open them up. And did end up getting two of these Batman figures. One of which to open and enjoy. And one to keep and open in my complete Batman-related unopened action figure collection. And I also got two of these Joker figures for the exact same purpose. One to open and one to keep sealed. And here are the Jokerized versions of Batman and Joker. Next to the regular movie accurate versions of Batman and Joker. All right, now that these figures out of the package, here they are with all their accessories laid out. Batman comes with Bane's legs, three batarangs, a grapnel launcher, a collector card, and a display stand. The Joker comes with six Bane hands, Bane's head, display stand, collector's card, and a big pile of money. In this video, we're going to take a look at each of the figures individually, we'll check out their accessories, height, and articulation, and we'll compare them with a bunch of other action figures. So. Let's go and start off with Batman himself. And like I said before, I really wish they dropped all four of these figures together so I could review the entire wave at once. Instead, they're going to make me wait another, I don't know, couple months to complete Build-A-Figure Bane. And it's not even a very cool looking Bane from what I see so far. That being said, these figures, they're kind of dumb. They're kind of cool. I, I don't even know how to explain it. First glance, I think Batman looks stupid, but there's something about him that kind of looks cool. The little Joker face on him. And then Joker himself, he's not exactly Jokerized like I'd expect. It's really just Joker in a black suit, sort of a mad love variant. And it actually looks kind of cool. But Batman here, straight Jokerized. Really weird. I don't know, they're, they're dumb, but at the same time, they're kind of cool, kind of visually appealing. They kind of pop. But my god, they're definitely unnecessary. Let's get back on track, though, and let's start off 
by checking out a couple of their accessories and then getting on to Batman. And I want to give a huge shout out to my boy Albert for making me this Joker diorama. This thing is awesome. I use it for the majority of my Joker reviews. Thank you very much. It's one of my favorite pieces. So before we take a look at each figure, let's check out some other accessories that are not specific to the character. They both come with a display stand. Two of my front stand we have seen plenty of times before. Very thin, very basic. Then we have their collector's cards. They both have Dark Knight Trilogy collector's cards, but they're both defaced or jokerized. Batman from The Dark Knight Rises. The backside, there's a description if you want to read that. Pause now. And of course, we also have the Joker card. Why so serious? The Joker from The Dark Knight Rises. I do not remember him being in that film. Shammy McFarland for getting dumb, obvious details like that wrong. Backside. Description, if you want to read it, pause now. Here's a look at the Joker Ice Batman's collector's card on the left, next to the original versions on the right, and the same with the Joker's collector's card. We have the regular version, and then the Jokerized Joker card. In addition to that, they both come with some pieces to collect a build, a Jokerized Bane from the Dark Knight Rises. I think it's annoying that you can't build this guy all at once. Honestly, I don't really need a Jokerized Bane from the Dark Knight Rises anyway, and from the pictures I've seen, he doesn't look that good. Still, Batman has the two legs, Joker has the head and the hands. We can't even start to assemble him until we get the torso piece, which I believe will come with Two-Face. So, God knows when those will come out, they haven't even officially been revealed yet. Although I did see a completed Bane on display at San Diego Comic Con, and I did not like what I saw. I'll tell you though, the head sculpt here, it actually looks pretty cool. Got the little Joker smile paint on top of his mask, a little makeup around the eyes, but the purple and green is all over his chest and it just doesn't look very good. Here's the original build of figure Bane with this Jokerized version of the head on top. It's really not that different. There's no green, there's no white. The only thing you have is the red sort of add on top of the mask, which I think actually looks pretty cool. Kind of grotesque, Joker eyes for sure. And then the makeup around the eyes, which it's kind of creepy. Makes it look a little bit feminine. It's kind of weird. I actually think the head looks pretty good. But the rest of the body that I saw, this is all sort of green and purple suspenders. It just looked bad, kind of dumb. Now to take a look at Batman. He comes with a grapnel launcher and three batarangs. Now I don't even know what to say about this guy. I've seen a lot of hate online and totally understand where it's coming from. McFarland is milking these paint variants. No one actually asks for these Jokerized variants. But they are kind of cool. But they're also kind of dumb. I know I've said that before and I'm going to say it again. So the actual shade of paint, the green, the purple, it's just so bright, so colorful, it just doesn't look right. But it is a Jokerized thing, so I mean, take it for what it is. It's supposed to kind of look that way. The suit itself, kind of a light gray, doesn't have the black, although I remember the original suit being a little bit too gray as well. Purple belt, Greek gloves, looks like sort of spray painted there. You can see the transition as it turns back into the regular suit. Same with the boots, exact same thing. Purple cape. Now, the head here. It's on the traditional sort of bale face, but God, it looks weird. It definitely looks like a Heath Ledger Joker paint job, which is exactly what it is. The cow is completely green, and then you can still see the sort of cutout where his sort of mouth would be exposed. You can barely see it, but it's there. He's got the lines around the eyes. It just all looks weird. It doesn't look right. It almost looks kind of feminine. I don't know. It's just weird. But that's the point. It's supposed to be weird. Visually, there's stuff that I, turns me off about it that I don't like, and there's also stuff that I do like about it. I would say this is one of the weaker Joker Ice Batmans they've released. I'd say it's my least favorite of the three. It just, I don't know, doesn't quite look right. The head, it's hard to explain. Something about it's just off, and not in a good way. The other two Joker Ice figures, they were off, but in kind of a visually pleasing way. I don't know, something I just don't like, the way the face is painted right on top of the Batman cowl. Just my brain is not accepting this. It's telling me it's wrong. I don't know. It's making me not kind of like it. And a closer look at his face and head sculpt. The sculpt is exactly the same, 
but the way they paint the face on there, the fact that it's like on top of the cowl where the mouth should be separated, blah, 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 it just looks weird and off to me. Now let's look at his accessories. He has the Grepna Launcher and three Batarangs. At least he comes with plenty of stuff. My first thoughts when looking at these, I don't need yellow Batarangs or yellow Bat accessories. I will never actually use these. And then I thought a little more, I thought, oh, these will be perfect for Batgirl. Or maybe even the Sinestro Corps Batman. We have that Dark Knight style Grepna Launcher. The sculpt is decent, but it's purely done in yellow paint. That sort of takes away from the sculpt. It looks very bland and plain like this. And then we have these Batarangs, the crisp Dark Knight trilogy style bat symbol. It looks good. These will be pretty nice for Batgirl, I think. At least I'll find some use for them. Here's Batman holding and getting ready to use the scrap and launcher. And here's Batman holding and getting ready to throw his Batarang. Here's a look at the three Jokers Batgirl holding those two yellow Batarangs. And here's Sinestro Corp Batman holding the Batarang. And here's Duke Thomas holding those Batarangs. The yellow color scheme goes along with this outfit. Now I wanted to check out the differences between the standard version of the Christian Bale Dark Knight Trilogy Batman and this Jokerized version. Besides the obvious paint differences, and they appear to be 100% the same figure, same sculpt, same articulation, just a totally different paint job. Looking at their faces here, Man, it just looks totally different. You can barely even tell the sculpt's under there, but it's there. It's got the same lines in its brow, the same sculpt where the mask is, but the way they painted it, it doesn't look that way. The suit is done in the same, sort of a little bit too light gray color, but he has black sort of spots mixed in there. He doesn't. He's got the green, the purple, the pink, that sort of stuff. So, which one do you guys like better? I'm pretty sure. 100% everybody's gonna say this one. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories, now let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his head, standing right at 7 inches tall, which can translate to just under 18 centimeters. And if you go to the top of the ears, about 7.3 inches tall. And now for his articulation. Starting with his head here, of course, you can rotate side to side. You can look up and down about that far. You can tilt his head from one side to the other. Shoulders on a ball joint. Goes out good 90 degrees. Shoulder pads are soft, but you kind of got to make sure they're going over the cape. Up, down, around, all that good stuff. He's got a butterfly joint between his shoulder and chest area. Increase the range of motion and covering the large gap that would be there. Bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows. His wrist can rotate and it's going to be hinged as well. Ball joint is torso. Rotate around, forward and back. Another one is waist, rotate around, forward and back, between the two, very wide range of motion of his torso area, a little more of the torso than the waist. Legs, complete of splits, not a ball joint, McFarland style hip joints. Rotations, almost non-existent, they go forward about that far. Double jointed knees, and then his ankle, forward and back, rotate, tilt, rock, and of course, to articulation. Now let's check him out. Next to some other Dark Knight Trilogy Batman figures. Here's the Joker Eyes Dark Knight Batman, next to the standard version. And there is a third variation coming out in the Batman Movie 6 pack. This one will have a cloth cape. And here he is, next to the NECA version of the Christian Bale Batman. This is in the Batman Begins suit, not the Dark Knight suit. It is the only Christian Bale 7-inch Batman by NECA. And it's the only 7-inch Batman Begins suit Batman out there. I hope it finally gets around a bigger one. And now... Next to some Mafex Dark Knight Trilogy Batman figures. We have the Mafex 1.0 on the left, the Mafex 2.0 next, and then the vastly superior Mafex 3.0 Dark Knight Batman on the right. And here, next to the Soap Studios Dark Knight Batman, then with the Mattel Movie Master Dark Knight Batman, and finally, next to the SH Figure Arts version of the Dark Knight Batman. Now let's take a look at the Joker. This is the Joker from the Dark Knight, played by Heath Ledger. And this is the Joker Ice version. It's not what I expected when I read they were going to do one of those. I thought it would be the Joker just with a bunch of sort of flair or makeup, very loud looking. Instead, they went with what I would call a Mad Love variant. Pretty much Joker in a black tux, purple vest, purple gloves. Beyond that, he's a pretty normal looking Joker. It's sort of a logical paint variation. Not screen accurate, but cool nonetheless. So let's take a look. Start with his face here. White makeup, red lips, green hair, dark makeup around the inside of the eyes. It looks 
pretty standard for a Dark Knight Joker. Green shirt, black tie, purple vest, black trench coat, black slacks. He's got the gold chain hanging out still. It's kind of wrapped around on this one, looks a little weird. Black dress shoes, double jointed elbows, double jointed knees. Overall, I think it's a pretty cool variant. If you're not into the Joker Ice figures, I think a lot of people might still bite on this one. He's not that really weird, over the top Joker Ice figure. It's just Joker in a black outfit. And a closer look at his face and head sculpt. It's not quite as outlandish as the other Joker Ice figures. A hair a little bit more neon green than I'm used to. And one thing I will notice is the neck is actually painted white. It's like this is maybe a perma white Joker, not the flesh painted one like in the film. Here's a closer look at the face sculpt of the traditional Dark Knight Joker. Hair way less sort of neon green. He's got the flesh on his neck there. Makeup pretty similar around the eyes and the lips. Now check out his accessory. It's a really cool accessory. A giant pile of money. I can put this to a ton of use. It also doubles up as a display stand. You can see the peg down here for the pickles on his feet. I think it's pretty hollow, pretty basic, but it's a really, really nice accessory. I'm really glad to have a chance to get a second one of these things. And it looks pretty much exactly the same with the standard version of the money pile. Paint slightly different, but just a factory thing, I'm sure. Would have been kind of cool if they jokerized this pile of money, but I'm definitely glad they didn't. I can use it a lot more this way. And just like Batman, these are the exact same figure, just painted differently. And I think this is probably a pretty cool Heath Ledger variant. A lot cooler than the Sonar version. So, I pointed out some of the differences earlier, but the hair is considerably different. The neckline, I find that very interesting, as this is almost a permanent white joker. The color of the shirt, the tie, the vest, the jacket, it's all different. And the shoes, a little bit different. Beyond that, exact same figure, paint variation. And now for the Joker's height, from bottom to the top of his head, staying about 7.2 inches tall, which can translate to just over 18 centimeters. Now for his articulation, starting with his head, of course it can rotate from side to side, he can look up and down about that much, tilt his head, one side to the other, shoulders, ball joint, goes about 90 degrees, up, down, around, he does not have that butterfly joint because he's a jacket covering it up. He's got a bicep cut below that, double jointed elbows, they go all the way in. His wrist can rotate and it is hinged as well. His torso, he has a soft goods overlay, it kind of pushes in as you can see there, almost a sort of a hollow feeling. Now there is articulation inside, but it's really all pointless, none of it's going to stick very easily. Yeah, I can sort of crunch him forward and back. Most of what you're going to get is out of the ball joint, the waist here, rotate around, forward and back. Legs, complete as a splits, not a ball joint, McFarland style hip joints. Rotation is non-existent. His legs go forward about this much, you got to kind of push them outward to get him to go forward. Back, not much at all. Double jointed knees below that. And then his ankle, forward and back. Rotate. Tilt rock, my rotation seems fairly stuck, and of course, toe articulation. Now let's check out this Joker, next to some other Heath Ledger Dark Knight Joker figures. Here he is, next to the standard version of McFarland's Dark Knight Joker. There is a third variation coming out, and that's the Sonar Vision Joker. Exact same body, but sort of in a semi-transparent plastic. And here he is, next to the NECA Heath Ledger Joker. Now this isn't the first weird repaint of a Heath Ledger Joker out there. This is a third-party Chinese bootleg of sorts, repainted the NECA Heath Ledger Joker. This one is repainted into Ronald McDonald colors. Not quite the black suit version, but another crazy repaint. Then, next to the Mafex Heath Ledger Joker, both versions 1.0 and 2.0. And here, next to the Mattel versions, the Movie Master on the left, and then Mattel's DC Multiverse Signature Collection on the right. And finally, next to the SH Figure Arts version, and this is not the first black suit Joker that I've gotten. Many companies have made them. DC Direct, SSR Toys, and Mattel. Here are the Joker and Batman figures post up in front of this Joker diorama, locked in eternal combat. Now let's check them out. 
Next to some other action figures. Starting off with some other Jokerized figures. Here they are. Next to the most recent Jokerized figure. This is the Dark Knight Returns Jokerized Batman. And here they are. Next to the first Jokerized figure. This is the Future State Dark Detective Batman. Here are all of the quote unquote Jokerized figure McFarlane's made so far. Now we know for a fact we're going to be getting Two Face, Scarecrow, and then the Jokerized Bane from the Dark Knight trilogy. Rumor is the next Jokerized Batman is going to be the White Knight Batman. And there's also rumors that they're going to be doing the Tim Drake Red Robin Jokerized. Beyond that, there are endless possibilities of who or what they could Jokerize, although I imagine the majority of Batman figures are going to get this treatment in the long run. And although he's not a member of the current Jokerized lineup, you could have the Infected Nightwing in your Jokerized shelf if you wanted. This is the Infected Nightwing from the storyline Death of the Family. We also have the Infected Superman and King Shazam the Infected. They were both infected by the Batman Who Laughs, and they could potentially work okay with the Jokerized display. They just don't have the same flashy colors. There's also the Infected Batman. This is the Batman Who Laughs when he first got transformed before he took on his new sort of S&M attire. He could also work with a Jokerized display. So these guys are gold labeled tardy exclusive figures. Now let's check them out. Next to some other recently released Big Farland DC Multiverse figures, and let's start off with some other tardy exclusive figures. Here they are. Next to the Superman vs. Doomsday 2 pack. Then, next to a couple of other Jokerized Target exclusive figures. Here they are. Next to the Target exclusive Flashpoint figures. We have the Flashpoint Aquaman, Project Superman, and then Flash. Another build a figure wave that I have to wait to finish. Also Target exclusive. Then, with some more Target exclusive figures Impulse, Sinister Core Batman, and Dead Man. And now, next to the Alan Scott Dread Lantern. This is Senio Comic Con exclusive. The first of many that I plan to acquire. Here they are, next to the Injustice 3 pack Batman, Supergirl, and Doctor Fate. Here they are, next to some recent Wander exclusive Gold Label figures. We have the Vampire Joker, Batman and Superman, Captain Atom, Eradicator, and Beast Boy. And here they are, next to the Goofy Head Sculpt Reaper Superman vs. Ultraman 2 pack. Then, next to the most recent Batman Wave, we have the Nightfall Batman, Two Faces Batman, and the Batman Incorporated Batwing. And now, Next to the Big Bad Toy Store exclusive, Black and White Accent, Superman and Flash. Here they are. Next to the Titans Wave, Collective Build, Beast Boy. And here they are. Next to the entire Flash movie wave. And finally, here they are next to the fifth wave of Page Punchers. This is a Batman themed wave, Fighting the Frozen. We have Batman, Robin, Batgirl, and Mr. Freeze. There's a Platinum Chase variant of Batgirl out there, and I'm on the hunt for her. Now let's check them out. Next to some action figures from different various companies. So we can see how they fit in, both scale and style-wise, in case you don't know which lines you can mix them with. Since they're McFarland toys, they're typically the 7-inch scale. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the larger action figure lines I collect, and work with smaller, and I'm going to include as many Batman and Joker figures as I can during these comparisons. Here they are, next to some of the McFarland toys brothers. In front of you are five different action figure lines, all for McFarland toys, all 7-inch scale. Then, next to a couple more McFarland toys, some Batman and Joker figures. And now, here they are with some Jack specific wrestling figures. And here they are with some DST or Diamond Select toys. Here they are, next to a bag of pretzels. Then, next to some DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures. And here they are, standing with some NECA figures. Then, with some Mattel wrestling figures. And now, with some Jazzwares AEW wrestlers. And here they are, next to some Mezco 112 collective figures. Then, with some Mattel, DC Universe Classics, and Multiverse figures. And here they are, with some Mayfex figures. Then, with some Hasbro, Marvel Legends. And here they are, next to some SH figure arts action figures. And finally, next to some Jazz Wars Fortnite figures. So overall, they're cool figures, but they suck compared to the originals. They're weird paint variants, and that's something McFarland has gotten quite too comfortable doing. The Dark Knight Batman doesn't do much for me. I like the Jokerized figures to a point, at least as much as you're going to like something like that, but I just sort of think they failed with this Batman. The colors are too bright, too colorful, too neon. The face just looks off to me. I mean, it looks on point the way they did it, but just doesn't look right on a Batman cowl. And I guess that's the whole point, is it's sort of supposed to look off, weird, Jokerized Batman. But then the Joker, not exactly what I expected when they're making a Jokerized wave, especially considering the way the other figures look. But I actually do like the Joker. It's a pretty cool paint variant with just a different outfit. If I had to rate these figures, 
Ugh, I'm probably gonna give Batman a four, maybe a five out of ten. Five, I'm being generous. And Joker, he's gonna get a 6.5 out of 10. Much better than I expected. Obviously, they're gonna be doing this Joker Ice thing to death. I anticipate after the Dark Knight trilogy figures, they're gonna make at least 11 more Joker Ice figures. If you wonder why I'm thinking that number, each of those figures came with four Joker Ice playing cards from a deck. We have eight so far, and I believe there are 52 cards in a deck. So that leaves 11 more figures to make. And these Dark Knight trilogy figures aren't even coming with those cards. So that tells me they're planning to milk this for a long, long time. And if you're into it, that's cool, but most people aren't. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say with the video, add it to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.